Hello and welcome to the 17 podcast. Today we have uh, Leo from uh, UK. He is an ODP which is a department of medicine that not a lot of people know about which I uh, came across very recently because of his post that I was reading and can you can you expand expound upon what your occupation is? Oh sure. No problems. Um, well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here talking uh, to you. Well, one more thing I would like to add is today's Doctor's Day, coincidentally. So happy Doctor's <laughs> Day. And thank you for uh, you. Like you people are really awesome risking your life in this lockdown situation. Especially at the first, there was a lot of fear about this virus. Now it's under control to a lot of extent. And I'm, I'm really grateful personally. And I'm sure a lot of people are. Oh, thank you very much, Saisha, for your kind words. Well, um, as, you t- as you just rightly said, I'm an ODP. Uh, that stands for Operating Department Practitioner. Therefore, I am not a doctor. However, I do work alongside the doctors, surgeons, anesthetists, and so on. And, uh, and, and they are, you know, and I'm very proud of work alongside those people because we, we do all together as a collective team, we do a very important work. And that is... Uh, to look after the, our patients. And uh, I think every single healthcare practitioner or anyone who's wor- who works in a hospital, no matter the position, uh, has been put uh, through, the, through the test during this, uh, this pandemic. And especially here in the UK, where our numbers were quite high of infections and unfortunately deaths as well. So, but t- talking a little bit about my profession, so um, it's a specialized, uh, specialized role. I work in the operating department theaters. So uh, um, I can work as a professional. We are in the same level as nurses. But the thing is, that what differs my profession for, for a nurse, from the nursing profession is that nurses have a very broad a sp- uh, ratio of um, operation they can you know uh, they can work in the hospitals in communities in gp practices and so on whereas my profession is specialized in theaters as i, as I said so i um, work in during surgery my role is to assist the anesthetist uh, when um, the patients come to us for their surgery so i assist the anesthetist to to have the, to put the patients to sleep and make sure obviously the old equipment and the drugs that are necessary for, for that are ready and readily available. Uh, as part of my profession, I could also work alongside the surgeons, helping them during the surgery or at the post-operative, uh, post-operative phase when the patients uh, exit surgery and go to the recovery area. So it's a very dynamic profession. Unfortunately, as you rightly, rightly said, not a lot of people know this profession, uh, not even in, in the UK, and sometimes not even within the hospital. Uh, it's, uh, it's our best secret, is a best secret, um, best kept secret, <laughs> this profession, but it is very rewarding. And, and I, I'm, I, I couldn't be any more proud of what I do. When did you choose to go for this profession or did it accidentally happen that you became, uh, you came into this profession? Uh, yeah, you could say that. You could say that. Well, um, my past actually, it's in my, my background is in engineering. So I was working in engineering um, in 2008, 2009, and then the credit crunch happened. I'm not sure if you remember that. Yeah. Maybe you, you yeah. I was, I was a going kid. To say maybe you, you were a kid. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're probably a kid. And uh, you're not sure if you could remember that, but it affected a lot of people and lots of people lost their jobs, me included. And so I became very unsatisfied with my profession as an in- engineer. Uh, and uh, because there was no stability. And uh, so I started to look at the options. And my wife, she 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 back home because I, we, I, we are from Brazil. I do I live in England. I'm originally from Brazil. So but back, so back home in Brazil, my wife was a nurse. So uh, I decided to give it a go. I never wanted really to work in hospitals. I uh, thought, no, I am a logical man. I you know maths is my thing, and I like you know 
logical processes and stuff like that. So I no way I'm going to be working in a hospital because that's not, it's just not me. But because of the credit crunch, I said, you know what, what the hell, I'll go, I'm going to give it a go and see what happens. So I started to work on the wards as a, an assistant. And, uh, and I find that I found that I actually liked it. And uh, I, at that time, I was already at college doing uh, my studies towards higher education. And uh, so I knew I wanted to study further and progress into a career within the medical field or, clean, or, or even as a clinician. And um, that was this opening at the, my local hospital for theaters. And I, and I applied to the job to, to, to be an assistant there, um, a low grade assistant. I have applied to that job and got the position. And then that's when I got into contact with this ODP profession. And then I thought, you know what? This is exactly what I was looking for. This is exactly what I wanted. And uh, therefore, you know, after that, it's all history. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the best thing about doctors is they are directly helping people. And there's a bit of a downside to it also that, you know, if something like bad happened to the patient, for, for, mm -hmm. for example, the patient passed away or something like that, yeah. then um, how do you guys, you know, uh, deal with that situation? Of course, fee helping someone is the best feeling in the world, you know, because mm -hmm. as humans, like it is programmed in our DNA, I guess. Like when we help someone, when we feel important, then we feel good. But what about the other situation? How do you handle these situations? Yeah, that's a, well, that's a very interesting question and, and very deep also, because it's, it's, there's no easy answer to that, you know, and um, you don't, you don't start into this sort of profession as a doctor or as a clinician, as an ODP, a nurse, or even a healthcare assistant, you know, someone that works in hospital. You don't start this profession um, because of money purely, you know, because oh, yeah, I'm going to go into this hospital and going <laughs> to earn lots of money. You know, that's simply not, not the case. You know, nobody really becomes a millionaire working in a hospital, you know. So, um, you have to care. You have to have a, le a very a level of caring, you know, for people, uh, and and that's that's in its on its own. It's a very rewarding prospect, you know, because when you when you care and you apply yourself to provide the best care you can to that person that needs you to be at in that position in their deepest uh, time of need. There's no there's no best better feeling than that, you know. I feel very I feel rewarded. At the, at the end of, of every working day, because I know that I have, you know, played a small role to contribute to, to, the, uh, the, to that person, to the patient, you know, to, to, for their betterment, for their health or for whatever they're going through, you know. And one of the reasons why I, I decided to work in, in anesthetics is, is, is exactly that. It's, it's that... Uh, it's because of when the patient arrived at the operating theater, most of them are usually very nervous and very anxious about the prospects of um, uh, going under surgery. Because if, you, if, because if you think about it, when you go under general anesthetic, you basically, relinqu you basically are relinquishing, uh, relinquishing uh, the, the, the control of your body to other people that you've never seen in your life, you know, they will be in charge of you. And, and, and so it's rightly, it's only natural that people will be very nervous, very anxious. And my aim is having those feelings, those thought processes in mind is uh, my position, my attitude is to always try to calm them down, have a, having a reassuring word and then basically just putting myself at their disposal, you know, as a professional and to and reassure them that we there, we are, are, as a team are there to make the, to, to look after them the best way we can. And we'll make everything that we can, that we can, uh, we possibly can to make sure that that person will, will wake up safely. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, surgery doesn't go without its risks. And sometimes, unfortunately, 
things do go wrong in the terms that of a, a patient that is very poorly and very unstable may may become may go past the point of 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 um, return which means uh, despite our best efforts, we were not able to, to the prevent uh, a patient's death. And, and, and that is part of the game, you know, unfortunately, uh, there's no surgery without its risks. And one of the risks is death. Uh, but as I said, of course, we do everything and to, that we can to prevent that outcome. And 90% and 90, 90 of the time, that's, that's what it is. That's, you know, the patient go to, to sleep and then wake up and and carries on with with his or her, her life, and and that's that. But unfortunately, our, there are cases where patients have been involved in accidents, for instance, you know, a car accident, or uh, fell off the roof, or you know, have been involved in stabbing, or or a wound shot, you know, a shot uh, that prevents us that the due to the seriousness of the case um, to control, let's say the bleeding or some other comorbidities that the patient already had that, be, that becomes you know, too difficult and too great to overcome and therefore uh, death occurs. Um, I still remember the, fir my, the, the first death I had on the table as a professional and that is something that stays with you forever. If you ask any doctor, any nurse, any ODP, anyone that works in hospital or more particularly in the operating theater, they will remember, they will say, I remember when I had my first death and um, that will stay with me forever. And, um, and it's not that you stop caring because we never do stop caring, but you learn mechanisms to cope with, with that you know, with that loss, with the loss of the patient. Um, it, is, it is never easy and, and it is never all right. There are always, no matter how experienced you are, there are always um, feelings, you know, uh, involved when you lose a patient, feelings of failure, for instance, and, 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 and self-doubt in terms of, have I done absolutely everything that I could have to prevent the this patient's death, and a hundred, you know, ten out of ten, answer the answer is yes. We, we we have done everything that we could possibly do to 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 prevent this patient's death, but unfortunately, it was out of our hands. You know, we 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 could not prevent that due to, due to due to the circumstances. You know, whatever the circumstances were. So um, so that that that's car. We that, that we will always be with us you know we always carry that scar and more scars are added to 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 the body you know to the as we as we go on but um and, and the good thing about this is that uh, many hospitals they offer uh, here in the uk of course they offer um, psychologic um, um support for 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 professionals doctors nurses uh, and uh, ODPs and so on uh, that have been through that uh, burden of losing a patient. So, um, so therefore, it's it's difficult, it's tough, but um, we 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 just have to be um, happy. And although happy is not the right word, I think you just have to be content. I would say that um, in those circumstances, we've done everything we could have done and, 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 and mourn, you know, uh, alongside the, the family uh, in, the, you know, in the way that we can and, um, and, and honor the, that patient's memory by going back to work on the following day and doing our best again to provide the best possible care that we can to the, to the next patient, you know. And uh, and so and and that's it. That's how it is. You know, that's how it is. But it's never easy. But we we learn to cope with it. Said it is mm -hmm. really easy for people to say that these many people passed away today. Like uh, especially in the news, we see every day. Like especially in these COVID times, that one forty one deaths happened, a uh, hundred deaths happened, a thousand deaths happened. 
or someone got into a car accident but not mm-hmm. all of us you know subject ourselves to the empathy that you know a doctor sees people coming into the er every day people who are mm-hmm. hurt people who are stabbed as you said people who got into an accident and they all are family so we have to be empathetic about the situation and if only we are empathetic then then situations like the pandemic will be handled but uh, just to put into perspective you know just to put into perspective um, what they should really should they just have a a, a throw to have a look what was happening in in, in the hospitals and um uh, for instance my my uh, where my where my wife work works at her local hospital uh they have to bring during the peak of the pandemic okay then not now but during the peak of the pandemic they have to have um, two uh refrigerated um trucks parked outside the hospital just to to be able to accommodate the bodies of all the of all the diseased and um and uh, it was the saddest thing to see because the mortuary within the hospital was already full you know the overcapacity they did not have where to put the bodies so they have to get those very you know those long lorries two trucks you know refrigerated ones that uh, just to be able to store those bodies you know to to for their families until they were able to you know bury them so so but nobody talks about that do you know what I mean nobody actually say do you know what this is what this is your hoax hoax right there in that in that truck you know that's is right there just look at that and uh, but nobody do that and that's the shame you know that's the shame and unfortunately that's why i think the, the, the this conspiracy theories is theories theories this conspiracy conspiracy theories and hoaxes rumors you know have gone as far as it did also uh, one more point i would like to add about the vaccination uh, is that taking the vaccine doesn't make you immune uh, like completely immune you can still catch the coronavirus because it's a virus it will keep on mutating and it will keep on getting stronger but if you take the vaccine there is a less chance that you might get severe uh, infections from the virus and you know it's it's covid is a real thing for those who do not uh, still have wrapped around, wrapped their head around um, what mm-hmm. is going on um mm-hmm. maybe with uh, god's grace you did not contract the virus but and that is a good thing but it doesn't mean that you don't take precautions and yes. um i would like to talk about a different um, side of things now um mm-hmm. uh it is about the covid so recently i read that uh, red and especially i even have experienced how <clears throat> the covid has taken you know a real mental toll on everyone in a more general basis um i think everybody has actually struggled no matter the age with with the pandemic during this the, the lockdown for instance um be in, in, in especially in very big countries like india and and brazil where people are very sociable and you know they're always out outdoors and 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 interacting with each other um i think um, there was a lot of discord uh, uh, about the the lockdown you know and a lot of people went against the lockdown which therefore increased the made it worse for the situation because increased the number of infections therefore more people died but um i believe that this pandemic despite all the the bad things the death the infections the people hospitalized there was a good outcome of it yes. to, to, yes. to, to it you know a good side to it because uh, and i talked about myself i had my struggles as well as a professional and 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 there were days where i was going to the hospital and i was thinking what am i doing you know i'm putting myself at risk 
I am putting my family at risk. I got a daughter. She's um, she's eight year old. She's eight years old, and um, uh, there was t- times where I had self doubts. You know, said, "Am I doing the right thing? You know, should I? Shouldn't I be just isolating and like everybody else and and, and escaping this this madness? You know, air quotes, um, and just um, take refuge at home. You know, but um, at the same time, uh, the struggle was." you know, the, the level of duty that I carry as a healthcare professional. And um, not just only toward my patients, but, but toward my colleagues, because I knew that um, they, 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 as a part, as, as, as a member of the team, they needed me as well. So, uh, so that, was, that was the struggle, you know, that was the struggle. Um, and a lot of people struggled on a different level. You know, no, no matter the age, they struggled as, you know, because they were alone, because they were isolated, because they were feeling lonely, because we, no matter what people say, we are sociable creatures, you know, we, we thrive amongst each other, you know, um, so, so there was a lot of mental health issues that came out as a result of this pandemic, but at the same time, I believe that, that the, the, the good aspect, the, the positive aspect of that is that it gave us the chance to reevaluate our values and the things that we really care about, uh, things like family, work. Some people just leave to work and then a pandemic comes along and then it turns your, up, your, your world upside down. And then, then, there, then you, where you cannot, you can, can't, you can no longer work and so what do you do? Well, we start focusing on other aspects of your family, of, of, your, of your life. Maybe you, you concentrated more on your family, if you had one, you know, maybe you, you concentrated more on, the, on, the, um, on yourself, you know, you, lots of people found new hobbies, lots of people found new uh, ways of keeping themselves busy and learned new skills. New lifestyles. Yeah, new lifestyles. And they realized, lots of people realized that, do you know what, I actually don't need to go to work every day. I could yeah, pretty much work from home. Uh, you know, uh, it's the pandemic has been really good for me. If I like mm. look at the objective curve of it, not the mental, um, mm-hmm. there were some struggles. As, like everyone has struggles, like who doesn't? So I won't take that much into account, but... Otherwise, it has been fantastic. I, I took up cycling regularly, like mm-hmm. especially like taking the precautions, not like going in groups of five, ten. Just me and my buddy would be there. Um, apart from that, uh, a, a lot of things change. Uh, you know, people when they are alone, you you get to know your priorities, like you said. Like who to focus on, like family, friends. Mm-hmm. Like who are the real ones who are not like many of many people have found new friends. Many people have let go of the old friends, and um, it's it's really been a time of growth. Uh, even professionally, like we have realized that not everyone needs to go to work every day, and it's really physically fatiguing to the mm-hmm. person. And you can get the same amount of work done better mm-hmm. at home. And, um, how did you come across the idea of starting your podcast? Yeah, <laughs> we haven't really talked about my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do have the a podcast, a podcast called "The Forty Something Guy," and um, it's interesting. The, actually, the, the the reason why I I started the podcast is because I I always liked podcasts. Um, I I worked. Well, I work in, in many hospitals because I work as a locum. So I'm a free spirit. I'm an, I'm an, an agency worker. So I traveled a lot. Not, not, not now. Now for the past two years, I've been in the same place. It's true as an agency worker, but in, in the same hospital. So, uh, so that's okay. But before, prior to that, I traveled a lot. And then in, but during the, the car journey, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts. And I started to think, well, you know what? It would be great if I could just start my podcast. 
And uh, because I, uh, because of my profession and the way I work, travel, I get to meet a lot of people, you know, a lot of doctors, a lot of nurses, a lot of all other ODPs and any other allied health professional. And, 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 uh, and they, those people, they are amazing because outside work, you know, they do an amazing job uh, inside work, but outside work, they have, obviously, we all have our, our private lives and where we do, you know, all sorts of things. And um, so I started to, to see, you know, this sort of, the aspect of these healthcare professionals, you know, these people that are working in the hospital, caring for people, and, but outside work, they, 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 they may be, for instance, you know, uh, a power lifter, you know, they may be a comedian, you know, they may be a book writer, and, and, and so on, a musician, you know, and so on. So uh, I started thinking, well, it would be, would, wouldn't it be great just to share that experience with these people, talk to them, get their insights, you know, get their, 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 their ideas, their thoughts, and, and how did they get you to do the things that they do? And so that was, that was pretty much my thought process. And, and that's how I started. So um, my story was like, um, before, like I was giving my 12th grade examinations and mm -hmm. I was just sitting and, and solving a paper. It was like, like two and a half a paper. At the end of the paper, I just got a hunch that I should start the podcast. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. And uh the name of the podcast even came to me it was like the 17 podcast so it's, it's a great it's, name by the way yeah thank you <laughs> it, it, it was all based on hunch and here i am but like, you but you're not 17 yeah, are you no i'm i'm 18 or 19 now something oh at that time <laughs> so, i was 17 that it's so was it's so much older now <laughs> yeah so much older <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm I'm the forty something guy, so you yeah. Know. <laughs> like, how something is a forty something exactly? Like, forty four, forty two, actually. Okay. Please, 42. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that old. Not that old. I'm not there yeah. yet. I'm not forty four yet. No, yeah. I'm, I'm forty two. But you know, it's all good fun, and uh, and. It's funny, you know, it is really funny because, oh, yes, I am 42 years old now, but uh, I feel no different from when I was 22. You know, I actually, if I, if I may say, I actually feel in, in better shape now than when I was 20, do you know what I mean, or 21. So it, it's, it's funny, you know, not, I think age is just a number, really. Yeah. Well, it, it, what it matters really is it, here, you know, is the mind. Is how healthy your mind is, how active your mind is, and 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 so on. Obviously, there is a, an aspect of looking after your body too, but um, but, but 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 in a healthy how... mind it has a healthy body. That's just it. You know, but like doesn't matter how how if your body will do anything, but if your mind is not you know functioning right, then mm. nothing is like nothing good is going to come like into your mind then like life will be in chaos yes yeah yes and, yes no i agree i agree uh, and maybe like you were traveling a lot uh, uh, when you were young so i guess that's the reason why you're um, feeling better now i guess well, well i i guess i guess i um i left the brazil when i was 21 years old um, and I, I went to live in Portugal. Uh, so I lived in Portugal before coming to England. I lived first in, in Portugal for five years. And, uh, and then when I was there, obviously I did a little bit traveling around the, the Europe and I'm still do, obviously not now during the pandemic, but uh, you know, obviously living in the UK, I still did lots of traveling around Europe. And um, so, so, I wouldn't say I am super traveled, you know, but I, but, un but unfortunately, I think I know more of um, Europe than I know of my own country because Brazil is a huge country. It's yeah. just humongous. Huge. And, 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 you know, I've no because I left very early in my life, I know very little, I'm afraid, but, you know, I'm catching up. I was supposed to go this back this year to Brazil, but unfortunately pandemics to very bad, um, you know, worldwide, and especially in Brazil. Brazil was also very hard hit by the pandemic. 
the same as India. Uh, uh, so that prevented me from going back to visit my parents in Brazil. I got uh, I still got parents and two sisters living in Brazil, but hopefully next year I'll be able to see them. And uh, any last advice you would like to give to the young listeners? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for listening to all all the gibberish I just told you. <laughs> no, it wasn't gibberish. This... It, it was like uh, interesting. It was quite interesting. Thank you. That's very yeah. kind of you, Saish. Um, well, that is a very good question to ask you. <laughs> one one I, I really never thought much. But let's say if I could go back in time and say something to my to my younger self, perhaps it would be live with no regrets. You know what I mean? Do the things you think you should do and the things that you think it are right, you know? But respect the others, you know? Uh, above all, respect the others. Don't, don't you know, um, Try to try to take advantage of others. Be honest to other people and to yourself. But um, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to travel, travel. If you want to change your job, change your job, because that's that's the thing. Unfortunately, we spend more time in our jobs than with our families. And if you're not happy in your job, change your job. You know, never, never become a prisoner of a shit job that you may do and believe me i've done loads of jobs in my life you know now i am professional but before that you know before i got to where i am now i've done loads of jobs you know loads of all sorts i worked in restaurants in cafes as cleaner uh man you name it you know i had my own shop uh yeah i did loads of things but the moment i stopped liking or loving what I did, I changed it. You know, I changed it because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So because otherwise, you know, there's no point in, in, in I'm not going to say point in life because that's, that's, that's not it. But there's no point in carrying on, you know, uh, and uh, with, the, with, that, with whatever you do. Because uh, as I said, we spend so much time at work. We have to, we have to at least be fulfilled with our work as well, you know, and, 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 and just be, ha just have fun, just have fun, man. be kind to other people, to respect and have fun, you know, and, and, and if you can take your friends along the way and help people along the way, even better, because when you're old, that's when you need the people that you, you met at your age, when you're young. Very so, nice. Um, <laughs> last thing I would like to say is age is just a number because it doesn't matter how long you live, but what matters is how intensely you have lived. It, yeah, that will, that's yeah. very well said. Thank you. I'm much yeah, older yeah. than I look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, no, but that's the thing. You, you, you may be young, but you could be an old soul. You see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Uh, the advice I would like to give to myself would be meditate. That that's just one word. That one word. That's it. Um. Anyways, which, I, uh, which um, word is that? Meditate. Just meditate. Um. Yeah. Meditate. Meditate. That's a good one as well. So, um. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this podcast. It's been a very fun chat with you, and um, that's it. Thanks for listening and do check out his podcast. It's a great one. Thank you, Saish. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. We had a, a, a blast. And um, yeah, uh, thank you. So thank, thanks again. And I hope to talk, maybe we'll talk again soon. Cool.